All right, welcome to this nice little how-to here. This is a common one people ask about. They ask, how do I do the spinning or fading points when I collect an object? So basically, this is the effect here, is when I pick up my burgers, you know, I get the spinning points, right, that also fade out. I'll do it in one, two, three stages. Uh, so just go from points fading upwards to points fading, spinning upwards, getting bigger. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so here's how we tackle that points object. So what I've done here in the room is I've made an object called points. And basically all I do when the player collides with a burger, you'll see what I do here is I make the ring. I make this points object just above the burger, y minus 16. And I set what you're going to see is the value of the points object. I've given this points object an instance variable called value, and I've set it to 5. So this way, when you collide into things, you can set how many points you want that points object to show as it uh, spins and fades out. And then I destroy the burger. Okay, so let's go take a look at the points object. So the points object is going to have a lot of variables here. And I'm going to do this in two stages. One where it just goes up and fades out and gets bigger. And then I'll do the little extra how you add that spin. So you'll see here, instance variables. First one I have here is value. So this is when you get to set what this is going to draw. So if you put 5 there, it's going to draw 5. You put 10, it's going to draw 10. Set whatever speed and direction you want this points object to go flying off at. And then the two important ones, alpha. This is going to be how faded out or how not faded out the object is drawn. So when I start at 1, the points object will be totally solid, and I'm going to take alpha down um, every step. Scale, I do a similar thing. I start the regular x and y scale of the object at 1, and I'm going to have a scale rate, you see below, where I'm going to make the scale value go up. So every time it draws, it draws a little bit bigger every step. This is just something I like to do. If I am going to change variables every single step, it's nice to make a variable for the rate so you can easily fiddle around in one place, right? So right now my alpha is going to go down by 0.03 and the scale rate is going to go up by 0.07. These others here, I'll throw in afterwards. So I should have fading out and getting bigger taking place. So let's take a peek at the step event. In the step event, there's my alpha going down by the appropriate rate, and there's my scale going up by a scale rate. Notice those values are pretty small. You just fiddle with what you like, right, in your program. As the alpha goes down, this points object is going to fade out, and eventually, when the alpha reaches zero or below, that's when it's invisible. I don't want to see it anymore, so that's my destroy of this object. Let's go check out the draw section of this. This is really the key here, all right? So, a couple steps. I set the color to white. I set the alpha of all drawing to the value of this point object's alpha. So, for instance, if alpha has gone down to 0.7, I'm setting all my drawing that I do to 0.7, so it's going to be 70% solid when it's drawn. Eventually, alpha goes down to zero, right? And you don't even see it at all when it's drawn. This is a command a lot of people don't know about. This says that when I draw the text, to center the text around point X and point Y. If I don't do that, well, I'll take it out afterwards and show you what happens. But this is a nice one. I name an X and Y. All drawing of text and images will be centered on that point. So that's horizontal alignment, right? And you set it to center. Okay, that's built in in Game Maker. Now here's the actual draw line. For those that always use draw text, uh, draw text will just draw the text. I'm going to use a script called draw text transform that's built into Game Maker. You give it the X, you give it the Y. You'll see here I am drawing out the plus sign plus whatever the value of the points is, right? So we get plus 5, plus 10. That's what's going to be uh, moving up. And you'll see here, these two parameters are arguments, scale, scale. Remember, that's a variable that I've been increasing. So my scale started at 1, and it's going up by scale rate every step. So that's what makes the uh, text draw larger when it draws out. 
So you'll see here in the parameter list, X scale, that's controlling the X growth, and Y scale, that's controlling the up and down uh, shrink or expand of the text. And the angle, I'm just leaving it at zero, right? No tilt in this. When I'm finished, you don't have to do this, but I like to do this. I put the alpha back to one. That way, you know, I'm not drawing other stuff faded. And I put my horizontal alignment back to left. So for any other text I draw, I'm drawing sort of the normal way. Now, when I have this coded in, what you end up getting is you get this effect. Alpha is going down. Scale is going up. So when I hit it, you can see it's fading out. That's the alpha. And the scale in the X direction and the Y direction is getting bigger. Okay, so that's sort of the first little simple part of the effect. Now that's everything you see coded there, right? So a few variables, those are the main ones. The rate variables are nice. That determines the change. In the step event, change them. Check if you're below zero for alpha. And in the draw event, just make use of those variables to do your drawing. So draw at scale and scale, draw the value out, and your alpha setting for the fading out part. Now, to actually get that spinning part that's next, we, uh, we add two extra little variables here. Uh, if you don't know about cosine, you know, go Wikipedia cosine and what it's about. For some people, they don't you know, know that math too much. But what I've done here is I had three extra variables. I had one called draw scale, and this is specifically going to be used in the X direction. It's how big I want to draw the little flipping number in the X direction. Because when it's spinning, it's actually sort of going bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller in the X direction. That's sort of the trick of the effect. You'll see it in a second. I have a counter to keep track of sort of time, how long I've been spinning. And then I have counter rate. This will be sort of how much I progress my timer every single step. So you can make it spin faster or slower just by changing this value. Now let's see how I use these variables in my spin. Keep in mind counter is going to go up. So what I do in my step event is I just make the counter go up by counter rate. And then I calculate a value for draw scale. Now this is a tricky line for those not used to using cosines and sines. What I have here is I have the scale of the object which is being set by that variable you just saw before which gets bigger and bigger and bigger so that is just doing a nice slow grow and then I'm timesing it by the cosine of the counter now what this does is when you take cosines of a number that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger the result of cosigning really makes the number go if you follow my mouse here makes the number go up and then down to negative 1 and back up to 1 and back down to negative 1. So you can uh, check out something about cosine online if you don't know that, but basically it makes like a circular motion cycling wave motion value. So it's going to go up and down, up and down, and that's basically going to make the draw scale calculated value go up and down and up and down from 1 to negative 1, but by this factor of scale. So if the scale is 3, the biggest value it's going to have is 3. And if scale was 3, the smallest value you're going to have, well, this could be negative 1 at its lowest, is going to be negative 1. So you'll see the effect actually works. When we go to the draw method now, we just change one thing. Instead of doing this one here, I'll get this one going. And you'll notice the only change I've done is I haven't touched the Y. Y, I'm still using scale, so if the scale is 2.5, the Y scale is still 2.5. I'm not touching that one. I just spin in the left and right direction. So instead of using scale, I use draw scale, which is just the scale variable modified by the code. Blah, sorry. It's just a scale variable modified by the cosine of our little counter. And so it's going to sort of make the scale flip. And for those that don't know, if the scale is negative, it basically means when you draw the text, you draw it backwards, right? Flipped in the X direction. And you actually get a spinning effect by doing this. So when I actually run this one now, you end up getting this. Come on, come on. 
so you get the spin. And you know, you can change your spin all you want. So if you do something like go back to the create event and you say, let's make the counter rate slow down a bit. So I'll make it half that value, right? 0.25. What you'll end up getting here is you'll see that basically the spin rate slows down in half because our counter isn't going up as fast. So, you know, you can customize all you want. You know, when I go back here, I could say the scale rate, you know, make it double. And you'll end up getting, obviously, this thing growing a lot larger. So you can fiddle whatever you think, you know, makes sense in your game. Now, I guess one last thing I said I would throw in there is I'll just show you what happens if you don't do the uh, text centering when you draw here. So if I take out this H align just to see how it looks, it actually doesn't look that bad. It may, it's sort of one of those, oops, I forgot that line, and you get this neat effect out. But you can see it sort of does that. My little vortex spin. Anyways, that may seem like a lot uh, for the spinning text, but it certainly gives you an idea of how you can start to take a very simple effect, like just make points go up, and how you can just chuck a couple of variables in there, you know, and make this object a little programming challenge of its own. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can use that in your game.